course, you will realise that tuna is a very sensitive fish these days because of its environment it lives in. But a fact for you, if you have a tin of tuna, if you go on to the base of the tuna, you will technically be able to find out where it was caught and how it was caught, whether it was lime caught, whether it was sustainably caught, whether it was dredge caught, whether it's yellowfin tuna, hundreds and hundreds of ideas on the back of a tin. You can actually go onto the website, if it's John West for example, and put in the information on the serial number and it will tell you exactly how it was caught, where it was caught and actually when it was caught. What tuna are you guys speaking with today? We're of John West, I believe. And ours is from Ecuador. Ecuadorian, yeah. Ecuadorian tuna. So I'm just going to chop my potatoes quite small. The smaller they are, the quicker they boil, and um, the quicker they will soften. So I've done two potatoes. Those are quite big potatoes. And into the same pan? Um, yeah. Fish cakes? Do you Anna? know the origin? Anna? I've not got a Scooby Derek. Do you know the origin of the, the fish cakes? The, fish the cake. origin of the fish cakes seemingly goes back to 4,000 years ago to China. What? I was going to say 4,000 years ago to China. I was going to say There was, certain, there was a, certain, a certain emperor who had a, a wife on her travels and they stopped somewhere and she wasn't feeling well. And the fishermen gave her a fish cake because they realised that when they were using the fish, uh, all the, the bits of the fish that weren't used, they, they, they actually put into, actually potatoes, believe it or not. But the most interesting fact is people think that fish cakes originated from the United Kingdom in the, ninth, oh, the 19th century, in 1853. Mm. And if you actually go on to a very well-known cook called Mrs. Beetson, very famous, her first book included fish cakes. Oh. There you go. Wow. Why is something there today? How do you think fish cakes got over here then from China all the way back then? Mrs. Beatson. Would you go to China? So in a bowl, we're just going to add the 
Tuna.
we need some black pepper. No salt. How's your week been, Derek? My week's been okay. This is only Wednesday, but it's been fine. Been keeping myself busy. Good start. I went, well, I went to B&Q this morning with my, my darling wife to buy some uh, petunias and oh some no. begonias for my hanging baskets. Well, nowadays that's like a holiday, isn't it? Because the garden has got to look good because we're not going to get anywhere this year, exactly. so the garden's got to be nice. Yep. But unfortunately, I came across, they had just got a fresh delivery of tough. Oh. And it was, it was still very, very, very fresh because uh -huh. it still had the worms in it. Oh, wow. So, so I, de wow. I decided that I was going to turf the back garden. Mm. And so I bought nine rolls of turf, put it in the back of the car. Did you have worms in your car? Yeah. Wow. And then got home and then immediately had to turf the back garden. So I, I felt a bit tired coming here oh. today. Well, yeah, and those muscles. Well. You've got to put them in good juice there. And I was back at Boar's Inch yesterday or Dunning Hill Office. People know I work for the Scottish Wildlife Trust, the volunteers. So I was back there doing some path building yesterday. Oh, nice. You are busy. I have been quite busy. So this is a bit of relaxation working with Carrie. This is this is chill out time. Mm -hmm. I can imagine the paths are getting quite used quite a lot. Yes, and because of the weather over the, the winter with yeah, the it's ice been and it's been high yeah. water levels, yeah. um, it's, they've been flooded. Yeah. So we're having to repair all the things. Two doors? Are they? Yeah, we're done. A couple of minutes now. Yeah, so just another couple of minutes for the potatoes. So we're frying our fish cakes. You could do them in the oven. Just cover them in a little bit of oil and then add them to a bacon tray. So we have used tuna in oil. It does say to use an egg to bind it, but I'm not sure if we'll need it. We'll wait and see what it's like when we add the potatoes. I think we'll wait till we add the potatoes in the We don't want crumbs. it to be too wet. Yeah. Whenever you want to go and use them, 
Just make sure they're completely defrosted and then put them in the oven at about 150 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. So you can make these ahead of time. I guess you could use the same recipe for like fish fingers and stuff like that. Um, you could do just do the shapes. Maybe not fish fingers, they're different texture, but you do things like cold nuggets. Mm -hmm. If you don't have bread crumbs as well, you can. Ruskeling. <laughs> and a little trip, a, a, a tip for today. If you're mashing potatoes, make sure you use a good masher. Oh. Because a bad masher makes it more difficult. <laughs> a bad workable blames his clothes, Terry. Oh, would you like to go and see this now masher? No, it's fine. It's the peeler, it's the masher. <laughs> And also remember, it depends on how you like your fish cakes. You don't have to mash the potatoes to a pulp. Yeah, that's true. You, you can do, you can do a kind of chunky or rough cut. rough cut or, you know, just depends on your own preferential taste. Kelly's asking, are the two large potatoes for the fish cakes? Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, if you're making potato wedges, I would probably say one potato per person for a child. Well, it depends how much they like, but... Probably half a potato. So just stirring in the fish, sweet corn, and the spices that we added. Ooh, you know what we haven't added, Derek? Yes, we did. Spring onion. What oh, spring onion? So I learned this trick with spring onions. Ours haven't lasted that well. <laughs> um, if you put them in a glass of water and sort of treat them like a flour, they'll last longer because they've got the roots them in the fridge. Like I said, you can use regular onion if you wish. Fine, finely chopped is the onion. Yep. So into little bite-sized pieces. You guys ever call them a side Never heard no, of that. No, 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 no. Going back years. My papa, my papa calls them side I don't think they call them scallions, but no. Scallions. Scal scallions. Yeah. scallions. Yeah. Scallions. I see that my papa loves his side That I just remember that being a kid and I'm calling them that. Ah, well, he's pretty old, you know. Oh, I love it. <laughs> you can use a white bit of the spring onion as well. Do you take the top and the bottom of that? No. No. Obviously, you don't eat the root. Oh. A good trick if you're ever doing anything fancy, like making a fancy salad, okay, is if you get your spring onion and not, not cut it through, but put slices through the spring onion all its length and put it in cold water, it begins to curl. Oh, the, same as what, the same as what you can do with a radish. If you take a, a knife and put slices in a radish, put it in cold water and it comes out like a little flower and it just gives that little je ne sais quoi to your salad. I'm going to do that day next time I make a salad. Tuna mixture, what do you think about the egg? I, I think, don't think it I, I'm, I'm, well, I don't know. Me neither. <laughs> right, we'll I'm, not, I'm not the chef, I'm <laughs> okay, the our, chef. Our mixture's quite wet. Well, one, one, we'll do one with and one without, shall right, we? We'll see, we'll see what happens. It's like master chef. If you're going to make your fish cakes and you find that it's sticking to your hands, if you dump in your hands, do you want to add the egg as well? It's just a binding agent. Mm, I'm, not <laughs> I'm unconvinced. Right, I'm gonna make one and see how it turns out. Ah. So you just want a little boil, boil, ball to your fish cake. Not very soon, if it? you have damp hands, it won't stick to your hands. I'm gonna make them little pate size and then putting them in the breadcrumbs. Completely coating them. So what I would probably do is like make the fish 
cheek, dip it in the egg, and yeah. then dip it in your breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. I think it technically doesn't need the egg. <laughs> But we shall persevere. They always persevere. I think, no, don't use the egg. I think it'll, you'll get a better quality fish cake. There we go. Ruth's asking, um, can you flavour um, the breadcrumbs yourself as well? You could do. Yeah, sometimes I like add like black pepper. Derek suggested chilli flakes if you want a bit of a kick. Mm -hmm. I was thinking garlic, a garlic crumb. Yeah. Yes. We always use garlic, don't we? Yeah. I think this is the first recipe we've made and we haven't used garlic. Derek, are you coping? If you try dumping your hands, it might make it. I think my, my, I think my, my, my mixture's too. If it's too wet, try adding a bit of breadcrumbs to the mixture. Well, that's a good idea. That'll soak it up a bit. Derek, you always get the hard job. I'll go and dampen my hands. They smell good. Yeah. I do like a fish cake. Me too. I've, I've never made my own fish cake, but... I know, I'm bad for just buying them. Well, maybe you'll try and make them. Uh, you can try these ones. Yeah, I'll try these ones. Anna, could you check on the potato wedges? Of course, Derek. Make sure they're okay. No worries. That's a reminder for anyone else making potato wedges, just to go and give them a little turn. This is a good bit for the kids. Kids always love getting their hands dirty. They're sizzling away, but they're not quite brown yet. Alright. Maybe it's ten more minutes. Is it getting on with the breadcrumbs in it, Derek? Is it a bit better? It's a wee bit better, but uh, technically I wouldn't add the egg. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. Or it may have been that I put too much butter in. <gasps> I'm guessing you could find veg in it as well, like great carrots. I was thinking that you could actually make these if you don't eat fish. You can make like a veggie patty. Mm. You know, like yeah. you've got the potato. You could probably put cheese in it. Great. Ooh, there you go. Great, like a carrot or courgette. Got your sweet corn. So if you just want to preheat your pan, this is gonna make quite a lot of fish cake. I'm not going to make four. Okay, I'll make four. Because I don't think mine's gonna taste very well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a funny feeling. You never know, you never know. Oh Derek. <laughs> You've had a rough hand today. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Can someone add two tablespoons of oil to our pan, please? I might actually add. Well, I eyeball it. Never eyeball. Oh. Eyeball. Always measure. Yes, yes. Ooh. I don't know what that would do, what, just give it... 
flavours? So I, I don't actually appreciate them that much because I mean, we, we don't know. But the, the Hairy Bikers, okay, mm. they did a lovely strawberry cheesecake, right? But they marinated the strawberries in Polish bison vodka. <gasps> I love that bison vodka. It's amazing. Oh, it's so good. Have you had it with apple juice? And then put, no, sh and then put sugar on the top. Wow. And as it all, it, when it all blends together, you're left with a, a juice as well, which they use and pour into the cheesecake. Oh, wow. But it's absolutely delicious. Just amazing. My uncle loves the bison vodka. He had like a, a big massive thing of it home from America. It's so good. Yeah, the bison grass. Yeah. The if bison grass, there you go. If you mix it with apple juice and lemon, it tastes like an apple pie. Okay. Oh. Bit cheesy to drink. Really. I think I've got a joke for you about fish. Okay. Yes. But uh, I'm trying to word it right so that it's it right. Okay. Uh, sorry, just before Anna tells a joke, this is my fish cakes pre cooked. Mine are quite big. You can make them whatever size you want. Uh, I remember getting told this joke in primary school, so I'm not actually, I don't actually know how funny it is, but I'm hoping you guys are all in good humour. Um, why is a chippy the roughest form of takeaway food? Don't know why is a chippy the roughest form of takeaway food. Because the chips are fried, the fish is battered, and the onions are pickled with their nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's one of the worst jokes I've ever had. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> no, Dad's had a joke. I was trying to take one for the team. Oh, well, I've jokes. Oh, that's cheap. Yeah. What do you call a fish with no legs? A fish. It doesn't have legs. Oh! <laughs> worse. No, I thought that, that was worse than What do you call a fish with no eyes? yesterday morning while walking the dog. Is it? Can you see that? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> you guys are killing me. What's that? That's a squid. <gasps> no. A portobello. Yep. That's oh, disgusting. That's was it big? That's it was about 15 inches, yeah. Wow, you should have took it home and they ca had calamari. No, they're not ready. Well, that looks cool. They need they're a wee bit brighter. Wow. Yeah. That's so funny boy. What's it doing at You guys are killing me. <laughs> oh goodness. We got to that stage. <laughs> and a beautiful bit of um, Tell Manny from North Berwick. Mm. Oh, the bit that's really good is that. Lobster shark. Oh yeah, that's right. Really good. Lobster. Fish is one thing a lot of people we come to don't eat. Mm. I think it is really good to incorporate, in, incorporate it into your diet. Just even one day a week. <laughs> Don't add egg. Okay, <laughs> you're a disaster. Warner says, what type of fish works in the TV and film business? Don't know what type of fish works in the TV and film business. A starfish. Warner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was good. I didn't expect that. I'm actually going to add a little bit more oil. Yeah, it might brown them a bit quicker. Or butter. A little bit of oil, maybe. I'm not going to try and put my own back together again. Why don't we just make one the size of the pan? Like an omelette. Oh! You see that? Like an omelette fish cake? Yeah, or tortilla. To be perfectly honest, it doesn't make any difference how they look, how it's they how they taste. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And the time and effort that you've put into making it. Don't judge a book by its colour. There you go, more the worst for the day. I think I would definitely recommend putting them in the oven for five minutes. I will you know it's cooked. It should be piping hot the whole way through. There's no raw ingredients in this, so the tuna is already cure, cooked and cured in the tin. But you 
want them brown and crispy on the outside, and they should be piping hot the whole way through. Is that, is that water for drinking? That was that was, that was the Saibi water. <laughs> <laughs> this is my water. Won't go there then. <laughs> Saibi water. Can we ask how everybody's fish geeks are doing? Uh, are they, uh, any comments? Has anybody got any pictures? We don't have just now, but uh, I'm guessing they're probably all... So a few it. comments that I would probably make. Don't add the egg into the mixture. What I would do is bind your mixture. I think it's wet enough with the tuna and the potatoes. Yep. I would actually probably dip it in the egg to coat with the breadcrumbs so Perhaps, that they stick yeah. better. Yeah. I think that would make them browner. Perhaps brush with a, you know, an egg brush. Yeah. And the other thing I would do is maybe if you have time, put the mixture in the fridge for a little while. Sometimes I think if you leave it, then it binds. It's too warm. Yeah, yeah, it binds easier. But these are all learning curves. Well, I've got another fish joke. <laughs> make sure the fish doesn't go past this shell by day. <laughs> Where does she get these from? <laughs> <That's brilliant. laughs> uh. That was tickled you tight, that. Mm -hmm. Just them. So, mackerel would be an oily fish, salmon. Tuna used to be an oily fish, but it was taken off. The oiliness because of the way it was farmed. Oh. So they can't, I don't think they can regulate it and say it's an oily fish. So what's the class size now? Is it white fish? Just regular fish. Regular. Wouldn't be white, would it be, wouldn't be white fish. White fish would be white like cod, haddock. You could use fresh fish in this as well. You'd obviously need to cook it first. Yep. Usually how I would cook it would be to poach it in milk. If you're using fresh fish. A smoked haddock is quite nice in a fish cake, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I think we always use salmon in our house. I like salmon. I'm no fussy, I like anything. I do like anything. What are you looking at me like that for? <laughs> Diane's doing <laughs> uh, fish joke as well. Oh, let's hear it. How do you fish? How do fish get to the hospital? Do you know how do fish get to the hospital? In a clambulance. Oh. An ambulance. Yeah. <laughs> I learned I was quite in the penny pit to become a professional Comedian. fish media. Yeah. Stand up fish show. It's like we're pushing Derek to his limit today. <laughs> I <laughs> think. <laughs> 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 because Carrie told me to put an egg in it. I didn't tell you, I was going by the recipe. The recipe says put an egg in it. Oh well, we know for next time. But yours are looking lovely, Carrie. <laughs> they're not bad, they're not. They're looking, they're well, looking very good. Well, I'm professional here. Derek, do you think she's getting a bit jealous that you're catched up with the cooking skills? Yeah, and so I've had gave you the gammy recipe. <laughs> Mine aren't really browning. certainly show your ones off. <laughs> just get a plate. Oh, they don't look too bad. <laughs> Derek, I bet you they taste the great. I've seen a plate of porridge looking better than my fish cakes. <laughs> oh. Oh. That's quite a good one. Good yeah. one. <laughs> just don't make it. <laughs> I'm going to actually have a little nibble. I hope you don't mind me saying that and I've got it's alright. I have other talents. 
Or is it, are, are they on the top tray? Yeah. No, they're not down there. They're no. Tell me how we have not for five minutes. Yes, sir. Please, thank you. No worry. You can be the sous chef for today. Well, I, I, I. So you get mackerel in little pan. You get mackerel in little tins like this. You can use it. These are boneless. Sorry, these are very good for you. Um, they actually have the bones still in them, so you still eat the bones, yep. which makes them high in calcium. Calcium we use for our bones, teeth, blood. There. Oh, you're yeah, looking pretty. That looks better. Not you, the, the fish cakes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't eat Derek, I think you need a. Oh, you should have kept a bit of spring onion to sprinkle on the top. Yeah, you could garnish it with various little bits and pieces to make it look nice. A little bit of French parsley on top. Oh, you French parsley would nice. I'm going to taste that. Are you going to taste mine, are you? Oh, nice crisp to it. Makes me a bit eggy. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> <Bet they again. laughs> one learns by one's mistakes. With the shina, I guess it doesn't matter if it comes from spring water or. We oil. use oil. Personally, I would recommend trying to get in spring water, just because the oil adds more calories, more fat. <laughs> Yours is like a chin and hash. That's, that's what I thought it looked like. Lorna says Sani, that's a cute egg thing. It's still it's edible. Lorna is. Is it? Lorna made this good bread. It's got sauce on it. Nice. Alright, one of mine's ready. So, let us know how you get on with fish cakes. You can take some tips that Derek and I have explored. So, try it with the egg, don't try it with the egg. This is my mm -hmm. final piece. This is the best one. I don't know one. Do you want to taste it? Could I use... Oh, this one's fine. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Definite dis uh, difference without the egg. Okay. Yeah, it tastes a bit better. You get more of the potato and the lemon and the tuna coming through. So, don't recommend adding the egg to it, but just trial and error. Let us know how you get on. Don't forget about your potato wedges, you should be about done if you're finished with them. And it's just going to go and check ours, it should be brown and crispy. Next week, I think we are making spaghetti bolognese. Oh, I love spaghetti bolognese. I love spaghetti bolognese. I'm good at spaghetti bolognese. Well, this is a trick spaghetti bolognese because we pack it with full of vegetables. Good. To hide it. Just before, just before Easter. Just before Easter. My birthday next week. So we birthday cake. Oh, nice. First of April. There's the potato wedges. Brown and crispy. Okay, Anna, you can put it down. Thanks. Is it the first of April? Did you get a lot of April Fool's then? Yeah. Is your birthday the first of April? <laughs> still, oh, wow. still get a lot of April Fool's jokes. I'm not sure I'm actually born in April Fool's Day. Maybe it's just been a joke this whole time. <laughs> Okay, so let us know how you get on with the fish cake. Send us in your photos. Mm -hmm. Maybe yours are a little better than Derek's and I. Well, we'll wait and see. Don't forget to tune in next week. Thank you, everybody, for joining Derek and I. And I hope you really enjoyed our fish puns. <laughs> Send us in any fish jokes that you have as well. And we'll see you next week.